potential ransomware activity in the coming hours and days. Victimized by what's known as a ransomware attack. Hackers stealing private data and holding it for ransom. A ransomware gang called R Evil is holding Apple's data hostage and has its sights set on more companies too. Tech giant Garmin has admitted to falling victim to a cyber attack. Dark side, they are allegedly the group behind this attack on the pipeline. It was the second such attack this month. Ransomware attacks cost the U.S. economy seven and a half billion dollars last year alone. These organized crime groups, Chef, are making hundreds of millions of dollars off of people paying ransom. The damage inside these facilities can be devastating. The first types of ransomware actually have existed for quite some time, going all the way back into the early 2000s, but they weren't as really prevalent as what we see in ransomware today. The beginning of it was with these fake AVs that would alert you that you've been infected with all of these things that weren't really there, with the goal of getting you to pay them 50 bucks to, uh, to remove the fake infections. What happened is companies became more and more reliant on their IT systems, logistics, manufacturing, you pick your industry. So soon enough, the criminal element realized, boy, instead of traditional extortion and loan sharking and you name it, we can hack companies, we can encrypt them, we can extort them, we can hold them hostage. Ransomware first came out in 2013, and the idea behind ransomware was, let's just take your files, your pictures, your movies, your data files, your emails, we're gonna take it and we're gonna lock it. And then you're gonna have to pay us money to get those files back. Back in 2017, the wanna cry, not pet your craze was really big news. My mother was like, did you hear about this? That was sort of the realization that ransomware isn't just a targeted model that you have to click on to fall for. Anybody can be attacked and breached because they combined ransomware with worm-like capabilities. This was huge because in a normal type of ransomware attack, it's limited to who clicks on it and it's only just their environment. But when it came to combining ransomware with worm-like capabilities, no, it was anybody who dealt business or ever connected to that machine at all through the SMB, which is server message block. This was able to infect like over 100,000 machines in 24 hours before the kill switch was activated. And we were actually very lucky someone even activated a kill switch. Didn't take long, maybe a few weeks, before WannaCry evolved into Not Petya. What they did is instead of encrypting the files, they encrypted the entire hard drive. The internet has a lot of wonderful things in it, but it also has some pretty nasty stuff as well. And so I think really what we've watched is just an absolute explosion in extortion or ransom-based attacks holding companies hostage. The great breakthrough for cybercrime in general was the introduction of cryptocurrencies because it's possible to launder stolen sums through cryptocurrencies in a way that makes them extremely difficult, not impossible, but extremely difficult to trace. And you can also use those cryptocurrencies to buy the services of other criminals. That's why pretty much all ransomware is paid in Bitcoin or one of the other major cryptocurrencies. Malware authors are always looking for the next trend to hijack, and COVID has been the biggest and most juicy trend for hijacking that's ever existed. What we saw was immediate uh, reaction by cyber criminal groups to take advantage of all of the initial you know, fear and craze. People wanted to click on links. They wanted to know everything they could about this. You click on it, it downloads a malicious payload, analyzes the environment, finds out what type of data is really the most sensitive data, whether it's industry secrets or customer data. And when they cause the ransom for you, um, they're not just ransoming your files back to you, they're ransoming the damage and reputation to your brand that would be the end result of you being breached. And so do you pay the ransom back because you need the files? Or even if you do have the files and you're, you're set to just re-image the machine and restore it back and put everything back because you were prepared, you still have something else to worry about, and that's that extortion sort of clause they created. Maze ransomware, and they were the first ones to introduce this new extortion tactic. As soon as that happened, everybody followed suit. They realized how great of an idea it was, so everybody is now doing it. When a company is ransomed, the ransom payment is absolutely the tip of the iceberg because what's going to happen is as a company, you're going to have to really modernize your IT infrastructure facing a big capital expenditure in IT equipment and software. The next part, which really can be a runaway train, comes with a government agency or regulatory committee that is going to fine you. And when you have customer data stolen, especially in the healthcare space, you tend to see lawsuits. 
Now you have an extra legal bill and potential damages you're gonna have to pay out. This is why it's so much better modernizing your infrastructure up front and the appropriate uh, defense and depth because it'll save you from a, a bad day or an existential day to your business.